What's up friends, Dan Vega here, and today I'm going to let you behind the curtains of my newsletter creation process. So each week I send a newsletter out to over 4,000 subscribers on danvega.dev. And really this is just a chance for me to talk to my audience, talk to my friends, and let you know what I'm up to this week. I don't have to worry about SEO or is this thing gonna get views? I just enjoy writing and this is a really easy way for me to keep writing each week. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how I create that newsletter. So this all starts in Notion for me. We'll go into Notion, we'll see how I start the week off by creating a new uh, newsletter and how I fill it in throughout the week. Finally, we'll get into how I go ahead and publish this newsletter to my website and then how this newsletter gets sent out to all of those subscribers. So I think this is a little bit different than, than what you're used to on this channel, but I hope it's something you enjoy. And what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. All right, so I begin the week right here in Notion. I use Notion for pretty much everything in my life, whether it's content creation, tracking issues in courses, uh, just kind of keeping uh, my life tasked all together. So if you're interested in how I use Notion for certain things, go ahead and leave me a comment below and I'll put a video together for you. So I have a newsletter board, uh, newsletter database here in Notion, and I have some different views of it. Uh, the first view I have is just the current newsletter. What is the one uh, that I'm working on or really any in progress? Uh, what are those? And the reason I do that is so I could throw it on a dashboard and quickly get to that information. You can also jump to something like all newsletters or board view, which shows you in progress, uh, completed um, or not started yet. So here we are in here. Uh, this one is done. I just published this yesterday. Again, today's Monday. This newsletter goes out every Sunday. So I just come in here and I need to come in here and go ahead and mark this as done. Um, so again, you could do that here or you can come into the board view and I can say um, I should have had this in ready to publish, but um, it is published. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in published. So if I want to come back to the current newsletter, you'll see that we have none. What I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new newsletter for this week. So I start off by saying new and new template. So I have a template that if we go ahead and go look at the edit for it, this is kind of the template that I use for my newsletter. In the beginning of the newsletter, I'm going to use this to kind of talk to my audience. Uh, here's some things I found uh, interesting this week. Last week I got my new MacBook, so I talked about that. Um, here's like a video or a blog post that I posted this week. So this is all about kind of me connecting with my audience. And then around the web is really things that I find during the week uh, that I think might be interesting to others. So I found this cool article on test containers or this YouTube video or podcast or et cetera. So you, you see all the different uh, sections there. Instead of having to recreate this kind of template every week, I just use uh, a template here in Notion that allows me to say new newsletter and I get all of this uh, for free. So I'm gonna say new newsletter and I gotta give it a title. <clears throat> so each week the title of it is based on kind of what I'm talking about. At this point, we don't really know what I'm gonna talk about this week. Uh, so I'm just go ahead, I just go ahead and say current newsletter. And I know the date for that is going to be uh, the 21st. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the 21st. And that's really all I need to fill out. I don't have a URL, I don't have a slug yet, I don't have any of this stuff yet. So now I have my newsletter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and save. You can see it automatically puts it in progress. So this is the newsletter I'm gonna constantly add to throughout the week, uh, hopefully. Sometimes I get down to the wire and I just end up writing this on Saturday or Sunday morning, uh, which isn't good. It's easier if I can kind of like add to this all week. Now one thing I wanna talk about is those links. So again, I kind of come back in here. Um, I find a cool article, I wanna share it with you. I wanna add it to this template. There are a few ways to do this in Notion, and honestly, I haven't found a great way to do this yet. So let me explain what I'm talking about. So here I found this cool article this morning on uh, the IntelliJ Idea blog. There's a lot of really great updates for Kubernetes and Docker in IntelliJ IDEA 2021.3. And there was this great article by Arena here and it kind of walks through all those. So what I wanna do is kind of share this with my audience. 
Um, here on the desktop, it's easy enough for me to kind of copy this title and copy this URL and come back and paste it in. But oftentimes I may be on an iPad, I may be on a phone, and I don't have time to go ahead and do that, e even here on the desktop sometimes. And that's where this Notion Web, Clip Web Clipper comes into play. And see what it does, it takes the uh, title and I can go ahead and, and save it somewhere. But I have to come in here and I have to say, all right, let me find the current newsletter. So I have to do a quick search for a second, hit that and then hit save page. Now I can come back over to my newsletter and you see that it's kind of saved it down here, but it saved it as another page. So to get that link and that title, I have to go into the page copy this and then copy the link. And again, this isn't really great for my workflow. This is not, I, I want something to just kind of hopefully copy the markdown links. So it was really nice. Uh, Benjamin Borowski on Twitter reached out to me and said, hey, I have a great solution for you. Uh, so basically uh, the solution was to create a new database for clipped links. So you copy them into here and if you, then I only have one place to kind of save links, right? Which you saw me have to like say, you know, find the current newsletter and save it there. This way I only have one place where I kind of save all my clipped links. And I can do something with some dates to kind of just show me, you know, what's happening this week. Um, but the cool thing is it takes the title, it takes the URL, and then you can use a formula to get that markdown, um, uh, markdown format of the title and the URL. So I thought this will work great. But then there's no real easy way to copy just the links for this week. Uh, Benjamin was kind enough to provide a solution where you have to like go in and create a links uh, column in the current um, newsletter and then copy which links you want. And to be honest, it, it's a good solution, but for me, it's just not, it's not gonna work. So at the end of the day, this is actually quicker for me. So I'm gonna come in here and say, okay, I found this cool article and I'm gonna copy that. I'll come back to here, copy the link. And if you do Command K on the text, you can paste in a link and there we go. So there's our first entry of the week. So I'm curious if anybody out there is doing something similar and has a better solution, please reach out to me and let me know, that'd be great. I know Notion has an API. I'm thinking about you know things I might be able to do with that. Uh, but honestly, this isn't the biggest time suck of my week, so it's not a huge deal. But this is kind of the first step, is setting up the template for the week, um, starting to put, paste in any links that I found great around the web that I thought I would share with you. And again, I'm constantly thinking of, all right, what are the things that I want to talk to my audience about this week? So we haven't got there yet, but I'm going to keep going throughout the week and kind of share my process of creating my newsletter and hopefully uh, someone out there finds it interesting. So again, it's Monday. I'll see you back another day and we'll continue building out this newsletter. All right, welcome back. It is Wednesday. We are continuing on to kind of walk through the newsletter that I'm working on for this week. So just to start off, I, I kind of like to, to kind of break the ice with just, uh, hey, what's going on? Uh, for me, uh, Thanksgiving here in the US, it's hard to believe uh, with the holidays, that also means that 2021 is almost over. That's just crazy to think about. Uh, I don't mind fall, but it's quickly moving from fall to winter here. We had some snow last weekend, temps in the 20s in Northeast Ohio. Not a big fan of it. Uh, I don't care for it, but it is what it is. We will get through it. Um, the first thing I have here is I, I kind of like to break this up into sections uh, of things I want to talk about. So I don't have a full... Um, you know, the full details of the MacBook review yet, um, but I was able to go ahead and put out a MacBook Pro M1, X, M1 Max review. I kind of hinted at it in last week's newsletter. I give you a quick review. This is a more thorough review as well as a setup guide. So that's on the blog. I'm hoping to get to the video portion of that. Uh, we'll see if we can get both of those done this week. I also had an email from someone who said, hey, thanks for sharing that information about your new MacBook. I've never used a Mac before and was hesitant to buy an expensive laptop and not having setup information for development work. As soon as I saw the title of your post, I decided to buy it. So that was really great. Again, I hope the, the video comes out. That'll kind of, I'm, I, I like to see things. So hopefully other people are kind of visual learners as well, just to kind of see something in action. 
So hopefully that video will help, but just uh, kind of, you know, anytime that you want to go ahead and reach out, whether it's an email or a tweet, anything, uh, that that really helps me out. I love getting, in, you know, just short emails like this. Uh, it just really makes my day. So uh, thank you for, for sending that email in. Next up is content creation. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm working on this video of how I create my newsletter each week. So that's one thing I'm kind of working on. Uh, part of that, let me move this up, is I really cleaned up my ConvertKit account this week. Um, so ConvertKit is the kind of system that I use to stay in touch with all of you. When you sign up on my website over at danvega.dev, that's how you know those email addresses go into ConvertKit and it allows me to kind of create this newsletter each week. So I really cleaned up everything. I had a whole bunch of forms and rules and tags and segments, and I really just wanted to simplify that. Uh, part of that is, hey, I just want to simplify things up. Um, it, you know, the new year is coming up. I like to kind of clean all my processes up. Um, this is a good time of year to start to do that stuff uh, going into 2022, which is weird to say. Um, I also am going to show my Notion board for video creation. Uh, you might be interested in that. I'm kind of borrowing from software development uh, in the kind of agile world, world where, where I'm really taking an, a backlog grooming approach. So we'll talk more about it in the newsletter, but you know, just having videos that I'm ready to film makes me much more uh, able to just sit down and film them. Uh, this is really the hard work is putting the the taking it from an idea to an actual video that's ready to film. So I kind of show that out. I also downgraded my Teachable account. So for those you don't know, I teach courses. Uh, they're all on Udemy. I also have them on Teachable. At one point I thought, okay, well, I could, instead of giving Udemy half my money, uh, I could teach all my courses on Teachable and you know just take 100% of the profit. I quickly found out that like, you don't have a marketplace on Teachable, so you got to drive all the traffic there. And I don't have the time with a full-time job and a family to also be a head marketer of danvega.dev. And, you know, trying to maintain two courses in two different places and answer questions, it's just a lot of work. So I've decided that for now, I'm going to remain, my, my courses are going to remain on Udemy. I do have some upcoming plans for some courses that will not be on Udemy. So we'll talk more about that in the near future as well. Um, and then just a couple other things, Nux 3. So I've been looking at um, getting off of Gridsome on my current website, danvega.dev. Uh, I love Gridsome, uh, but, but it's just not being developed anymore. And there are things that I wish I could do, like have components within my markdown uh, so that, that I can do certain things in my blog posts. And so for that, I started looking into Nux3, and Nux3 looks really exciting. It's still in beta. It, I don't, you know, I'm not ready to move tomorrow, so that that doesn't matter. So I'm going to take an approach of just kind of learning Nux3, and I'll probably start to share that information on the blog and the website. So if you're interested in that, please let me know. Uh, finally, Nellify announced that they uh, have raised another $105 million in funding. I'm just a huge fan of Nellify what they're doing to make building for the web so accessible and so easy. Excited to see what they do in the future here. And, and, and I've started putting some links to videos and articles. Um, I, I put a tweet in here. So Apple uh, announced today a self-service repair, which should allow anyone who is comfortable with completing their own repairs. Uh, this is a really exciting step forward because uh, it's been impossible to do that in the past. So that's all I got so far. It's Wednesday. One important note that I've kind of decided on as, as I've been really trying to refine this newsletter process is I'm going to move this to Mondays. I'm not going to do this on Sundays anymore. It's just the open rates for newsletters on the weekends are a lot lower than they are on, say, a Monday. So I'm going to try that out. Uh, I'm going to move this to Monday. So I'll have to update the website because it says Sunday on there, too. Uh, but we'll go ahead and update that and we'll see if the open rates and and if you guys uh, enjoy that change, let me know. Uh, so we're not done yet. We'll come back later this week. We'll kind of finish this up and then I'll show you my posting process. So I have to get it created uh, on my website. I have to send out that email in ConvertKit and get that scheduled to go out to you guys. Uh, so we'll walk more through, uh, through that process towards the end of the week. 
so with that, uh, I'll see you in the next one. All right, so it is Sunday. Again, we are changing the cadence on the newsletter release this week uh, from Sunday to Monday. To So Sunday is really my chance to kind of finish this up, get it published, get it scheduled to be released Monday morning. And that's what we're going to do today. So I've gone through here and I've added some more um, information. So before we saw just kind of some outlines of some things, uh, but now I've kind of filled that in. So if we've got our MacBook review and setup guide. I was able to get a YouTube video together for that. So I included a link there. Um, I actually realized that after I was done completing that whole video that my audio was a little bit off. Um, so I use this program called Crisp, which is really great, by the way, if you do a lot of Zoom calls from home and you have noise in the background or kids, Crisp can help you kind of filter that out. But when you have multiple audio sources, you got to kind of pick which one Crisp is using. And normally that's my USB condenser mic, my AT2020. But for whatever reason, it was using the onboard mic on the new MacBook Pro, which I guess isn't the worst thing. It's a nice... Um, you know, part of the review, uh, just showing how good that microphone was. Uh, it didn't turn out too bad. I had to do a little post editing to get it cleaned up, but uh, I just don't have the time to re-record a 30 minute video. So it is what it is. So that, and then I filled in some content creation stuff. So this has been on my mind a lot. Uh, as we head into the new year, I wanna get some things cleaned up, some processes streamlined. Uh, so first, talking about the newsletter, I'm recording this video. Um, we we start with our template Notion, and at the end of the week, we go ahead and convert, uh, publish using ConvertKit. So I'm hoping someone finds this useful, and it, and if you like videos like this on on kind of my processes, please let me know, and and I'll try and create more. So speaking of ConvertKit, that's the tool that I use. Um, I use this to go ahead and manage my mailing list and send out emails. You're going to see that in a minute as we create this broadcast. I spoke a little bit about Teachable. Um, for anyone new, I teach courses online. Uh, really, uh, when I started out, I started out on Udemy. When you don't have an audience, you need a place like Udemy that has a marketplace to kind of market your courses. So at one point, I thought maybe I would self-host my courses. Instead of kind of splitting the profits with Udemy, I would just drive my audience to my Teachable account and I would keep all the profits, right? Um, and then I can offer it at a lower price. You know, there are a bunch of advantages to that. Well, it turns out there's more disadvantages. I don't have the time to be, uh, you know, to be in the marketing game and trying to push people to that and Again, when you don't have the audience, it's really hard to do that. And on top of that, now I'm maintaining courses on two different platforms, answering questions on two different platforms. So, yeah, so there's a lot going on there. So I, what I decided to do was downgrade my Teachable account. It's still there so that if you did sign up through Teachable, you still have full access to all my courses or, um, or as long as you need them. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be maintaining my courses on Udemy. I do have some plans to maybe do something else coming up, but uh, I'm not ready to commit to that yet. So speaking of Udemy, man, I, I got to get this under control too. I had someone answering questions on Udemy. I don't have anyone answering questions right now. So I need to get a description of what I'm looking for and hopefully get someone to help me out with that. That is going to be a paid opportunity. So if anyone's interested, please reach out. Um, but I really want to get the questions under control and, you know, take a look at the courses and, and kind of ask myself, what can I do to make sure that these are staying up to date? Um, so in addition to the MacBook review, I also had a quick video on the Java 16 stream into list. So the stream interface has a new method called to list, which, is, which makes it easy to say, take a list, turn it into a stream, do some filtering on it, and then turn it back into a list. Um, to also talk about my kind of content creation process around videos, just really quickly. Uh, I have this video Kanban board where I take an idea from really just like a one sentence into an actual idea into, hey, this thing is ready to film. Um, and I talked about how I took this as more of a like software development world, you know, something that I borrowed from that world. 
and which was really grooming the backlog. Um, so now when I sit down, I have a whole bunch of things that are ready to publish. I just kind of hit record. Those things are ready to go. So I do all the hard work and then, you know, do recording and editing is kind of the easy part for me. That's, that's stuff I like doing. So, um, and I mentioned, Hey, if you want to see more of those videos, uh, the only way I'm going to do them is if people want to see them. So reach out to me and let me know. Uh, talked about Nelfi, huge fan of Nelfi. They raised another 105 million in funding. Uh, excited to see what they do next. So I just filled in some links. Uh, so if you're interested in some of these, check these out. Uh, there was a really great interview, uh, deep dive with Ali and uh, Chrissy Chella on finding your vision, mission, and mission and why. And uh, one of the quotes she had was, if you don't believe in yourself, who will? And I just, that, that really resonated with me this week. Um, so thanks, Chrissy. Thanks, Ali, for just a really great, great video. I was really inspired by this one. So, um, so that's it. The newsletter is ready to go. Um, there are a couple of things that we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is I filled in a title. Um, I got to get better at these titles. Like, I'm not sure what to do with these titles. So for anybody who's kind of new to the newsletter, it used to be called Coffee and Code. But, you know, I, I still like that that title. But but even if it's Coffee and Code, I need like a title. Like, like there's an, ep, you know, this is like an episode. This is a new edition. You know, this is an episode of the newsletter. How, how do I get to title these? So still trying to do that. Um, sticking with content creation. The first thing I need to do is I update this. So I just did that. Um, I need a um, nice, uh, like a, a good URL, a friendly URL that I'm gonna use on my website. So I just went with slash content creation. So I fill that in there because what I'm gonna do now is take this over to my website. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to make some changes to the website here and add this week's newsletter. So if you don't know, my website is written in a view static site generator called Gridsome. It offers a lot of flexibility and some things that we can do. And one of those is I have basically a newsletter folder and in there I have the different years, months, and days, and they're all just markdown files. So what we need to do now is create a new folder for this week's newsletter. Now, again, it would have been the 21st, but we're moving to a Monday cadence. So I'm gonna come in here and create a new folder a new folder, which is the 22nd. Um, and then inside of, I wanna make sure that is in the right place. It was not, so that's good. And then what we're gonna do is create a new file. We'll call this contentcreation.markdown. And this is where we start our markdown. So most of the time I'll just copy this previous one. Uh, I can generate this slug if I want to. I actually have scripts that I generate those, um, all the front matter for my blog post because there's a lot more of it, but for this one, it's not a huge deal. So let me head back over to the browser, grab the title for this, head back to Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna add our slug. This is gonna be our, our friendly URL, so we'll call this content creation. And then the date is going to be 11, again, 22. We'll call this nine, let's say 9.30 a.m. This will go out and we'll save that. So now it's time to go ahead and put some content here in this markdown file. So what I'm gonna do is head over to Notion. And this is one of the things that I really like about Notion here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command A. It's gonna copy that first paragraph. I'm gonna hit Command A again, and it's going to copy everything. I'm gonna go ahead and Command C, come back here, paste, and as you can see, everything is in a markdown. So this really works for my workflow. I like being able to just copy this. I like writing in here. I like writing in the Notion app a little bit better than the web, but I like writing in here and then just uh, exporting this out as markdown. Now there is one caveat to this. So we have one image in here. So what I'll end up doing is coming in here and just saving this image because the way that I saved it is I used a screenshot utility. I cop, you know, I took a screenshot of it. I just kind of copy and pasted it into there. And 
uh, that doesn't really save it anywhere on the disk, right? So what I need is to come into this folder that I just created and say Notion Video Backlog. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And now that image is in there. If you have more than one image, if you have a lot of images, this can be tedious. There is another way to do it. If you go up here to these three dots and you go to export, you can choose to export everything in Markdown and include all the content. Um, or if you don't want to do that, you don't get all the files or images. But that image part is important because you, if you had like 10 images, you'll get all of those images in a folder and you'll have the markdown file and then you can kind of use that from there. So I've done that in the past as well. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to start looking through here and just, I know this is probably gonna not come through. So let me change that. Um, we have that image that we need to fix. Everything looks pretty good. We'll call this the Notion Video Backlog. And oops. And then this is just gonna be the local image. So Notion Video Backlog. Everything looks good. One other formatting thing I have to do here is I need some breaks. Um, I've tried putting these on separate lines and for whatever reason, it doesn't line up right. Um, I'll fix that another time. So that looks like it should be good. I wanna make sure it's good. Uh, I can run grid some develop here. It's gonna run a local server of my website. And that way we can go ahead and preview what this looks like. So what I'll do is jump over to localhost 8080. And I'll go to newsletter and there's our new entry. And I'm just gonna scan through here. All I'm looking for is to make sure that it looks formatted correctly. Any images are showing up, any tweets are showing up. My links all look good. Uh, we'll talk about more when we get to ConvertKit, but um, links, uh, ConvertKit does a really good job with links. I don't have to check all these links right now. ConvertKit actually checks them for me. Uh, so that's a nice feature. So yeah, this looks good. Um, so at this point, what I'll do is I will go ahead and commit this change and we'll push this up to my website and then we'll head over to Nellify where I host my website and we'll take a look at it there. Now that I come into Nellify, we can see that we have a we have a build uh, building. And so when that's done, it'll be ready on the website. So in the meantime, what I can do is come here and let's take this. Um, actually, how do we want to do this? Um, yeah, so I want to do two things here. So what I'll do is I'll copy this link. Okay, so here in ConvertKit, um, I went over to send and broadcast, and this is how you create a, a one type um, email that's just gonna go ahead and get sent out to everyone. Uh, well, you can pick who it is, but um, I'm gonna say new broadcast, um, and then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna change the template type. I really need to create a new template. Uh, you see one there, I was kind of playing around with it, but we'll just stick with what this is right now. And so we're gonna pick the title here. And then the reason I copied this is I wanna make sure this is correct. That does look right. And then now I can just copy all of this. So yes, I wanna format that. Um, <clears throat> One thing I want to do here is fix this image. So this is, we're going to replace this one because by default it's using, you know, the inline image that we used on the blog. So I have to choose a new image. So we're going to go to newsletter, uh, 11, 22, and then this one. 
And did that pick it? There it is, cool. So now in here, we can just go ahead and say preview. And that looks good to me. So again, uh, possible broken links. So sometimes this shows you all the broken links. Like right now, this one isn't on my website yet. So again, we have a link to the website and it's still building. That's why that one's broken. Sometimes it's just because uh, maybe a page loads slow. Uh, so if it tries to, tries to hit a URL and it's not loading right away, it can cause these. But this is generally pretty good at telling me which one of these links in here are broken. So I have a ton of links in here and it's nice to know that none of them are really broken. Um, so with that, you hit continue. Uh, who the from address is gonna be, I'm gonna change this. I gotta ch update this so that it's from me. I don't know why it's not. <laughs> Uh, who is it going to go to? I'm just going to send it to everyone. You could kind of filter down if you had multiple like segments or tags. Uh, you can de decide who it's going to go to. But right now I've simplified everything and everyone on my list is just for my newsletter. Um, it's just, a, again, a way for me to kind of stay in contact. Um, and then we can go ahead and send now or schedule this out. Um, so I'm going to schedule this out for tomorrow, Monday morning, and we'll get it out. So let's see if this is done building. It's not, um, it takes generally a couple minutes to build this out. Um, but when this is done, I'll go check it on my website to make sure it's there. And if it is, then we are good to go. So I think that is going to be it. Um, again, uh, I hope this was something you're interested in. I hope you find this useful. Uh, I'd like to make some more videos like this. So if you like kind of diving into some of the processes that I'm working on behind the scenes, things that I'm doing, you know, this is a great opportunity. You know, that's why I started the newsletter is it, it, it's kind of a no uh, friction, just an easy way for me to write and talk to you guys and tell you what I'm up to without like worrying about <laughs> SEO or is this going to get views? Like I'm just here writing and, and talking to you about what I'm up to. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, let me know. But if this video right here helped you, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And as always, friends, happy coding. Happy.